Hey, it's Joseph here. Today I am doing another build and I'm quite excited. I wanted to introduce all the parts before I go ahead and spend a bunch of time assembling all of these things together. But starting from this side over here, I've got a Farah H1M case from Silverstone and from the same company I've got another CPU cooler and for the simplicity I wanted to go with the air-cooled version so it is Silverstone Hydrogen 120A RGB so it does have RGB on it although I'll probably not connect it for the reasons that you might already know which is I don't really prefer having so much RGB in my case and the very reason for choosing this specific case which is a micro ATX case so it is sort of a mini tower and it is actually quite simple looking it is a minimalistic type of design it doesn't have all the flares of the gamery vibe of RGBs and such it is quite stealthy it's still allowing a good amount of airflow along with a very good price on all the parts that I have chosen here. So I would actually expect all of these parts to be well within the balance of performance and budget. So yeah, let me get through the rest of the parts. So the CPU of the choice is quite hot in the market since it is quite newly released in Intel Core i7 12700K. So this CPU has a lot of cores along with some efficiency cores to help out some of the tasks that are not as performance intensive. And it is my very first time building anything with 12th gen. So yeah, I'm actually excited to test this one out in my regular build as well. And by the way, this build is going to be my main build that I'm gonna use daily. So I wanna make sure everything is done properly, but also something that is reasonable in terms of budget and performance so that other people who's interested in AEC or architecture or 3D modeling or rendering type of things are able to utilize. And by the way, the part that I'm actually missing right now is the graphics card, which is currently being used by the computer that is recording, and it is NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti, which is uh, another graphics card that I have showcased on my previous video, along with a storage that I'm probably gonna replace this with, which is a Sabrent 2TB Rocket 4 Plus version. But this one is also very good, although it is a little bit lower in terms of actual storage. I feel that 500 gig or maybe one terabyte will suffice for most case scenarios. So this is WD Black Edition and the specific model name is SN550 SE, which is sort of the more budget oriented storage, but it is still going to be very fast and they are quite well priced as well. And in terms of the power supply, another one that has been provided by Silverstone and it is 850 watt 80 plus platinum grade power supply. And I don't think a lot of people need 850 watt power supply. However, if you're putting a beefy graphics card as what I had just described, along with overclocking your CPU, then you do want to make sure that you're not gonna take out your power supply with some power peaks so you want to have a good grade power supply such as the ones that Silverstone makes therefore I have chosen this specific part and requested and that is what I'm gonna build in however if you are putting less of a graphics card or CPU then you might want to step down to save on some of the budgets and in terms of the budget I really like the selection of this one, which is Asus Tough Gaming B660M plus Wi-Fi D4. It's quite a mouthful of a motherboard, but when it comes to motherboard, there's a lot of things that you wanna make sure that you are getting into, as well as the budget. And this was right around $150, I believe. I'll just flash the price on the screen. Although it is kind of gaming oriented and it does have sort of RGB stuff, but it was really well priced but also it is micro ATX which means it will fit in this case without any problem and the choice of micro ATX was made because I have noticed that a lot of ATX motherboard or cases 
tend to be not as well budgeted. It tends to be a little more expensive than micro ATX or even mini ITX. So micro ATX seems to be somewhat of a balanced size in terms of getting all the performance and the budget together. So yeah, I decided to kind of go down that route this time around, although I have built in ATX and a lot of mini ITXs in my previous build video. So if you're kind of following along, you will notice that I'm just kind of testing out different grounds. But this time, yes, micro ATX is where I'm going with. And in terms of the motherboard choice, that's what I have made here. And if you go down the micro ATX motherboard, then it allows you to have four different RAM sticks. So if you are not satisfied with whatever the initial two that you put in, then you can put in another two to increase your RAM, which is a very good route to take in terms of increasing your RAM size. So the RAM choice is right there, which is a 16 gigabytes. Although I'll probably put in my existing 32 gigabytes because that's where I think I need in terms of my daily tasks. So if you're not using a lot of memory, then you can rely on 16 for certain. But if you think you are loading a lot of heavy models and complex projects, then you do want to rely on 32 gigabytes and put it in here. And one of the benefit is that you put in 16 and if it is not enough as you go, then you can put in another 16. So basically four sticks of memory in here, no problem, which is not really possible in many ITX cases. And one of the thing that you wanna watch out for, especially when you're building the 12th gen Intel CPUs is the fact that it supports both DDR5 and DDR4. And unfortunately for those RAM types, DDR5 is not as available and it is quite expensive at the moment. So you wanna stick to DDR4 if you can, for now at least. And yes, you are gonna see performance improvements with DDR5, but it is just not mature yet. So if you're trying to build your PC right now, because the CPU's gone down in price and a lot of performance is on the table, then you wanna find a motherboard that's gonna get you with DDR4 type of RAMs so that you can get your parts cheap, but also very efficient. And in terms of other things that this board supports, it does support Wi-Fi 6 and also Bluetooth. So I can make sure this will connect to the latest stuff. You definitely need those wireless devices connected in this day and age, especially for work. And it does have plenty of other USB ports, so you can connect other peripherals as well. So behind here, I've got a few accessories. Here are two Be Quiet Pure Wings 2 case fans. I may throw these two in there to just kind of help the overall airflow if I feel that it is just not enough. I believe this case does come with a couple of included fans, but yeah, this may go in if I don't think there's enough airflow. And here is another one that I typically throw in to all of my builds, which is just a simple Wi-Fi antennas, but often a lot of motherboard manufacturers will include some sort of antenna that are connected and need to set on a tabletop somewhere. And it tends to be somewhat finicky. And I like having these short antennas. They might not have a good amount of coverage. You can get much longer one if you feel safer, but I've gotten away with these just fine. So you just kind of screw these on to the back. So with that out of the way, I'll spend some time in assembling all of these parts together. It's something that I enjoy doing. So I do want to put together a montage so that you guys could also see what I was kind of doing. Sometimes things don't go as planned, so I may end up spending a bit more time than necessary. So fingers crossed that things will go smoothly. But yeah, let's go ahead and build and I'll meet you at the end of the montage. And today's video is sponsored by VIPS CD Key. I actually enjoy building and tinkering with the custom computers that are exactly tailored for my needs. However, all of these builds need one thing in common, an OS or the operating system, specifically in my case, Windows. Thanks to our sponsor VIP SCD Key, you can get a copy of OEM activation key that actually works for Windows 10 Pro. Just be sure to use the links in the description for the type of windows that you would like to use. And use a secure payment method such as PayPal with the promotion code JK25 for an additional 25% off from a ready cheap cost. 
and I have paid total of $16.25 to get the key for my new computer build. Once you have made the purchase, you can simply view the code and log that into the activation section of Windows. You can simply hit next and the Windows will check the code via internet and your Windows is activated. And because this is a legal copy of Windows 10, upgrades to Windows 11 is free and available. Be sure to use the links in the description to get discounted Windows keys from VIP SCD key and use the promotion code JK25. So after a while, yeah, this is a success. I was able to put together all the parts without much of a hitch. I did spend quite some time on it, but I'm glad how it turned out to be. I did turn off the RGBs on the CPU fan, so you don't really see that, but you can see the fan is kicking on and turning around and I do feel significant amount of air that is currently being moved but it is quite silent since everything is 120 mil fans which is kind of what I want and the overall build is quite light as well the power supply is surprisingly the heaviest portion of this build and I'm quite conscious of the overall size and weight because I mount the computers under my desk so that's something that I actually kind of watch out for although it's kind of unusual for you to do so and I like the overall 
form factor. Everything is kind of black and kind of stealthy in some ways. And if I put the solid panel up here, it is just really very subtle type of design. So there's not much going on. And I really appreciate that look. Yeah, so this is gonna go through some testing of mine. During the build, I have noticed that I still need to work on my current machine. So I went and gone ahead with the RTX 2080 Super instead of 2070 Ti. So eventually I will migrate that card in here, but for the proof of concept that is there, and also the drive itself, I have put in the 500 gig of WD SSD, the NVMe SSD in there, and everything is working fine. So I'm gonna test out Windows 11 on this machine because the Intel 12th gen is really meant for Windows 11 where it is able to schedule different set of cores for different type of tasks. So that is something that I'm intending to do with this machine and I really like the overall look. What do you think? So in terms of the overall build, I kind of put together here is the kind of well-balanced machine where you have 500 gigabytes of storage that is fast and also 16 gigs of RAM and then 2080 Super of graphics card. So this is a well-balanced machine for architecture, 3D modeling and renderings and such and it will be able to chew through those things. But if you need a little bit more than that, then you can go ahead and upgrade the 16 gigabytes of RAM to 32 and also the GPU to something better than 2080 Super. I can hardly imagine that you really need to do that but I'll be doing that since I already have a graphics card which is 3070 Ti and it should be able to handle ray tracing better than this card and in terms of storage since it is 500 gigabytes that should be enough for most of the tasks and I usually offset all the extended storage as project files that I'm not actively working on I usually set aside as an external drive also the NAS drive that I'm currently testing on so I'm not really needing an active drive to be that big however if that is just not enough then one terabyte would be a good solution but I will stick in a two terabyte stick since I already have one so I'll be replacing that eventually so it'll be a overall upgrade which is also quite well balanced but the price for that will be a little bit higher than what you got over here so I think this is more of an average build that you need for all the 3D modeling and rendering type of stuff and I really like the aspect of any desktop build because you can continue to maintain like this and then upgrade parts as you need to and it also looks nice and you can kind of have a pride in yourself of finishing a build and having a working machine that you can actually do work on. So if you have liked this content, please like and consider subscribing to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.